pocket. Tell me now! Tell me what to do! Get him up! Get him up! He's not breathing. No. Follow! Follow! You didn't mean it. He fell. We had a misunderstanding and... We're going together. I'll tell them what happened. Right here is where Andor shows you it's not going to be your typical Star Wars story. It immediately puts itself in a gritty and mature tone and it does not pull any punches. It is not a happy show. The best way I can describe it is righteous anger. People are fed up with the status quo of the galaxy and you can feel it in every scene. You get so many interesting characters with numerous different perspectives on the current state of things from both sides. Luthen, a man who is so desperate for the rebellion to work he's willing to do anything kill, lie, sacrifice others, all to achieve his goals. Dedra Miro, an Imperial Security Bureau officer attempting to bring to light a coordinated rebel effort while simultaneously climbing the ladder of command. Mon Monthma, a senator playing a dangerous chess game of deception to redirect people from her funding terrorists. Surreal Karn, a disgraced deputy inspector who is obsessive, lonely, and has clone trooper action figures in his room. He's literally me. Bix, Kino, Saw, Melshi, Vel, Nemec, Skeen, Lonnie, Sinta, Marva, Brasso, B. And at the center of all this, you have Cassian Andor. A man just trying to get by and only out for himself and those closest to him. Never looking up to see the bigger issue, even though it's yelling at him right in his face, he keeps trying to ignore it until he cannot do that any longer and is forced to do something about it. And then when he's given the choice to look down again, he decides to be selfless and take action. It is so good, I absolutely love it. Andor is the best Star Wars Disney Plus show since Mandalorian Season 1. So Andor here is based off of his appearance from the first three episodes. This is my favorite outfit he had in the show. I really like the colors and the overall look of it. Cassian is a morally gray character. He has good intentions, but he does some horrible things. You have a character like Han Solo, who people debate if he would shoot a man in cold blood. We all know the answer. It's yes, but Han is a good guy at the end of the day. Andor... Not so much. If you are slightly a threat to him, he will kill you without hesitation. Legitimately, I wouldn't be surprised if someone was to watch this show and come out thinking Cassian is a terrible person. And I think that's what makes him such an interesting character. His pistol is a Brick Arms MW20 blaster. I cut out a little bit of styrene to add these two plates that were absent on the mold. I also drilled out the barrel like I usually do. And it's all painted up in a dark brown with some copper weathering. Added some other details such as filling in the vents and the wood stock for the gun. I really like the show's clever way of reuse, such as Marva's ship is the same place Cassian hides in, his pistol belonged to his adopted father, and he uses his father's name Clem when pulling off the heist on Aldani. Think of a name. Clem. In the next five days, you'll be Clem. And all that is shown to you. They never say it outright. You can just pick up on it naturally if you pay attention. Take me up Briggs Road and hang me in the square. Is that where they hung your father? Watch! <laughs> <laughs> It's like poetry, so if they rhyme. His hairpiece is a modified Last Jedi Luke Skywalker hairpiece. I reduced the length in the back and re-sculpted the top and the front with Procreate and painted it all black. For the head, I used one of the Din Djarin heads with the new medium tan skin tone that works perfectly for Andor here. It's really cool to see LEGO making more skin tone variations. I erased everything except the eyes, like usual. Painted the eyebrows, the beard, the lines on his cheeks, the lines between the brow, the little shiner he gets in episode 1, his mouth, and I sculpted the beard under his chin to give it a little more depth. The head and the hair were sealed with a gloss finish. 
The series captures that grimy, lived-in feeling that Star Wars always has. People look like people, nobody's a supermodel, you can see the pores on their face and the sweat and the dirt on their skin. The cinematography helps with this a lot. Close-ups and thousands of handheld shots making things feel intimate and just like Rogue One, capturing the scale of things. The show doesn't feel cheap, the sets they built are incredible, it also helps that they actually filmed outside, which is really nice to see, and it's all brought together perfectly with the fantastic soundtrack that fits so well, composed by Nicholas Bertel. Also, the show is great because they have officially canonized Jacob's sheep in Star Wars. <coughs> the jacket was made out of a clear vinyl material, the straps on the arms is the same material, the pockets on the jacket are made out of electrical tape, and the hood of the jacket was sculpted with Procreate. The jacket is primarily in a medium and a dark brown, with a chestnut brown segmenting the two. I went over the medium brown parts with a reddish brown. The oval eyelets on the arms and the front of the jacket are painted in gold and everything was outlined in black. I went over the entire jacket with a Citadel Null Oil. On his right hand, I also painted his bloody knuckles. I absolutely love how this show treats its political messaging, because as much as people complain about the Star Wars prequels having politics in them, as I've gotten older, one of my favorite parts of the Clone Wars era of Star Wars are the politics. I love democracy. And I always felt like the original trilogy era really didn't give you a good idea of the state of things in the galaxy. Obviously, <laughs> Empire bad, but you don't really get to see it from a day-to-day -day perspective. This show perfectly conveys to you that the Empire are evil bastards. There's a scene in this show where the Empire tortures people with the amplified sound of dying children. That is the most fucked up thing I've ever seen in Star Wars. So underneath the jacket, we have quite a couple layers of clothing. It must be pretty cold on Ferrix because Cassian has three to four layers of clothing on at any given time. The third layer of clothing is kind of an overshirt, I guess. This was sculpted onto the torso with a very thin layer of Procreate. The overhang of the shirt under the belt is a strip of vinyl. The belt itself is electrical tape and the buckles are sculpted alongside the collar of the second shirt. Now the overshirt is painted in a light navy blue with some greenish gray strips going up the sides. The second shirt is a darker navy blue. The undershirt is a dark grayish tan. The belt is in two different browns and the belt buckle is gold and all of it was outlined in black. The show has constant twists and turns and it keeps you on your toes from the opening scene of Andor killing a man in cold blood to shooting Skeen without hesitation. Seriously, someone get this man a Snickers. And probably the biggest curveball, while everyone's looking for Andor to kill him to keep him quiet, tell him how his mother's doing, interrogate him or bring him to justice, he's living in a fucking nightmare world after receiving a six year sentence for walking. This is one of the best twists I have seen in a while, because just like Cassian, I didn't know what the hell was happening. I think we're all tired of generic stories, so having something like this is awesome, because the gloves are off. Anything could happen. I didn't know where the story was going to go next. I love it when Star Wars tries new things, and this is a perfect example of them doing that and it paying off. The fact that we can have a storyline that's so out of left field and still ties into the rest of the story, and have it be one of the best parts of the whole show, and it comes together perfectly with Cassian's character arc. So what I'm asking is this, wouldn't you rather give it all at once to something real? I'd rather die trying to take them down than die giving them what they want. It's just so good. The prison arc is one of the biggest highlights of the show. Turn it off. Excuse me? Turn it off! That could mean so many things. The pants are painted in gray with lighter gray lines for the seams. The pockets are painted black with gold buttons. The knee section is painted black along with the boots. The boot straps are made out of electrical tape. The boots themselves are outlined in gray. And the soles of the boots are in a dark gray. So that's about it for Cassian Andor here. I'm really happy with how he came out. I was starting to get worried after Book of Boba Fett and Kenobi. It was really starting to come off like they were just making content for the sake of it and not really having any passionate stories they wanted to tell in the Star Wars universe. But I'm happy to say that Andor put those feelings to rest. It's a story about standing up to tyranny, about a corrupt, oppressive government pushing their weight around and bullying the little guy, the feeling of hopelessness throughout as the Empire tightens their grip over the galaxy, but people start to push back. There's this ever-growing feeling of dread as it slowly builds up to a point where all the tension just breaks and people start fighting for what they believe in. It's so damn good. <laughs> Oh,
taste. Well, agree to good. Yeah. 